Hey everybody, we're gonna to try to get through a kind of difficult graph in record time. Let's see how we do. Here's what we're doing. We're doing a per unit subsidy, no market failure. That means that the market left alone is going to achieve allocative efficiency, is gonna achieve max social surplus. We've got a market with no externalities and really it's a competitive market and no other market failures, okay, that exist, okay? Some might call this a pretty stylized world and well, it is a bit of a stylized world, but we need to be able to do this type of graph, okay? So again, we've got a market that's achieving allocative efficiency, by itself, we don't need any in intervention at all. So no market failures, and we're gonna do a welfare analysis, okay? So here's my graph, and the first thing I'm gonna do is kind of just say, show how we have no market failures, and hey, if you're not there in your textbook yet, it's coming, I promise, and this idea of market failures and externalities, but don't worry about it. You don't really need to know because there is no market failures or externalities in this particular video, okay? But I am gonna go ahead and say, look, marginal private cost equals our marginal social cost, the total cost to society, okay? So what the supplier is making their decisions based on is the total cost to society, not just their own internalized cost. Those two things are equal. And hey, there's no external benefit from the consumption of the good other than what the consumer internalizes, okay? So the marginal private benefit to the consumer is the same as society as a whole, okay? So I'm just emphasizing no market failures, okay? In this particular example, that means that, hey, QM decided by supply based on marginal private cost and demand based on marginal private benefit is right here. And our Q opt, which is based on these social curves, is right there also. They're in the same place. Then we're gonna to choose to intervene for whatever reason. Maybe it's just political reason. There's somehow like either the consumers or producers of this good have some political clout and they're able to levy the, you know, the parliament or the Congress, the legislative body to get a per unit subsidy. So they get a per unit subsidy. So we're gonna bring in our per unit subsidy just very quickly. We're gonna use our modeling tool known as the subsidy wedge. PP and PC, the most important thing to understand is that it's separating the per unit revenue to the producer and the price to the consumer by the amount the government's coming in and providing those market participants money, i.e. the per unit subsidy. So that vertical distance is the per unit subsidy. We're always focused on the marginal private cost and marginal private benefit curves when we bring in a per unit subsidy or a per unit tax for that matter, because these are market-based interventions focused on the market participants who are of course the supplier and demander who have of course making decisions based on their own private cost and private benefits, okay? So we're gonna slide that subsidy wedge and we have other videos to kind of give you the confidence for why it's gonna fit in there the way that it is, okay? So put it right there. This is going to increase the quantity supplied and the quantity demanded by the same amount to Q subsidy, all right? Now, as we said, the price consumer is gonna go down. What do I mean? At that original intersection, that was price market, which was our original PC and PP, but the PC is gonna come down, price consumer, they're benefiting. Their per unit cost of acquiring the good is going down, their PC is going down. And then you can see I'm on the supply curve, by the way, right there. And that gives us our PP. So I always tell students, if you get confused, if you get nervous on a test, that is on the demand curve. It's gotta be giving us PC, right? Because demand, we think consumer. That dot's on the supply curve, we think producer. There's our PP. But then we also understand a per unit subsidy is increasing the per unit revenue to the producer. They're benefiting. So both the consumer's benefiting by their cost going down and the supplier's benefiting by their per unit revenue or per unit benefit going up, okay? And again, that's the per unit subsidy right there. So let's go ahead and get some letters in here. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H. Quite a bit of letters. And let's head on down here to our welfare table, okay? So the first thing, the first column is always groups. The groups we're gonna have, we're always gonna pretty much have our consumer, sorry about that, consumer, and our producer. Those are our market participants. They're always gonna make our table. Now we've also got the government making our table. Also, see the double line? That means we've got society at the bottom. Society includes everything above, okay? Whatever we have above, that's what society is including, okay? Society is the sum of the above. What we also have is a policy one, which we're gonna say is no intervention, okay? So we're not intervening, so no subsidy. Policy two, so we're always gonna have two policies, like a, a, like a status quo I sometimes say, and then a policy alternative. I think that's a good way to think about it, like a status quo, policy alternative. Sometimes I call it policy one, policy two. Policy two is the per unit subsidy, right? So we're gonna come in with that per 
unit, we'll just call it per unit S, okay? Per unit subsidy. The final column right here always, always is going to be a delta, which is looking at the difference between these two. Okay, again, we're trying to set record time here, so let's get do it. No intervention. What's the consumer going to get? Okay, well, we can go off of price market, right? Price market to the demand curve, marginal private benefit. That's the price to the consumer, A and B, right? Plus A plus B. Hopefully that's not too much of an issue based on the other videos that you've watched. Now, producer, right? Just going with price market. Price is a benefit to the producer. The curve is the marginal private cost, right? And the difference between the two, that plus H plus E is their surplus. The government, no outlay right now at all, not affected. Now I could put plus A plus B plus H plus E, but I just generally just say, hey, sigma above. This is just everything above. Don't really need to do that based on the way we're doing this analysis. We'll still be able to get this one based on going this direction and then bringing it on down, okay? Now, we bring in that per unit subsidy. What's gonna happen for the consumer? The big thing is focus on that PC going down, right? Here's my PC, it's right there. Marginal private benefit, right? Marginal private benefit. There's my benefit line. That's my cost, because price is a cost to them. The difference between benefits and costs is the surplus. A, B, E, F, G, right? So plus A, plus B, plus C, plus E, plus F, and fitting in a plus G right there, okay? So there we go, A, B, E, F, G. I think I got that A, B. Oop, I got a C in there. That's what went wrong, okay? So I added something I shouldn't have got, so let's do that again. That C's not getting in there. That's M, P, B. This is my price consumer. That C's not inside of that area right there. So A and B, E, F, G. So plus E, plus F, plus G. We're only looking inside of the M, P, B and the price consumer, that's not that. There we go. Okay, moving on to the producer. The producer had H and E. They're now not gonna get B and C because there's price producer, there's the supply curve, right? Price producer per unit benefit, per unit cost. So plus E H plus E plus B plus C. Got the producer in there. Government, it's an outlay. It's costing them money. It's a negative, right? There's the per unit subsidy. We gotta go all the way to Q sub. So this whole rectangle right there, we gotta bring it in and we gotta remember to do negatives. Minus B, minus C, minus D, minus E, F, G, minus E, minus, oops, minus, minus F, minus G, all of that is the government outlay, that rectangle, because per unit subsidy all the way to the subsidy line, that makes that rectangle the per unit subsidy. Sigma above, that saves a little bit of time. Consumers, they're gonna benefit. We're, you know, the government's coming in there and giving market participants money. That's basically what they're doing. So they're gonna benefit by E, F, G. You can see right here, E, F, and G, right? So plus E, plus F, plus G. Producer. We're giving the market participants uh, benefits. They're both gonna benefit because basically they're almost benefiting equally because I have the elasticities of the supply and demand curve basically equal over this price range. So they're both gonna share this benefit just about equally. All right, so what are they getting? They're getting B and C. They already had H and E, right? So plus B plus C, that's right there, okay? The government, just pull that right on over. Minus B, minus C, minus D, minus E, minus F, minus G, fantastic. Now, this one, okay? These are really important. They show what happened to the consumer, the producer, and the government. These are important cells in and of themselves. This is our most important column, is the delta column. But let's go do this thing, and I do like to cross out on the videos just to make sure we can see this happening. So here, I'm gonna use this one. Plus B, minus B, plus C, minus C, plus E, minus E, plus F, minus F, plus G, all right, minus G, What's gonna fall down to the bottom is a minus D. What is this saying? This is saying right here, whoops, that didn't work very well. This right here is saying policy two for society is worse by that area right there. And because we had no market failures and we were allocatively efficient, there's that bell I was trying to beat, that's okay. Because we had a situation, no market failures and we were already allocatively efficient, we can actually say this is not just how much policy two is worse than policy one, we can actually say it's our dead weight loss. It is the amount we're gonna fall short of max social surplus. Here's what's gonna happen, guys. That subsidy is gonna make us 
over allocate resources to the production of the good. We only wanted to produce to queue up. We only wanted to allocate resources so that we produce to queue up. We're producing out to here. There it is, okay? That's gonna give us that negative D, that dead weight loss. Now, one more thing I wanna show you, okay? Look at the producer and the consumer. What we're seeing is their delta in surplus, okay? Now, hope you can see it the way I showed you. E, F, and G was the consumer's gain and surplus. B and C, okay, B and C, that was the producer's gain in surplus. Sometimes on the test, you might be asked, what is the benefit the consumer's getting and the producer's getting? That's a little bit different than change in surplus, okay? What is the benefit the consumer's getting and the producer's getting from the subsidy? When you do that, you have to account for the entire amount the government has given out. What's the entire amount the government's given out? B, C, D, E, F, G, okay? We only accounted for B and C going to the producer and E, F, and G going to the consumer. We didn't account for D, which was money given out. It's not adding to their surplus, okay? I'll go into that in a different video, but I just wanted to kind of highlight right here, it is gonna be part of the benefit that they're gonna get, okay? The dollar amount they're gonna get. It's not gonna be surplus, it's not gonna be profit to them, but it is a part of their benefit. And so what I really need to do is draw this straight across and i'm just going to put d and i now this is now irrelevant don't look at these anymore because i've now broken that d up into d and i the producer's benefit of the subsidy if you ever get asked that question is actually b c and d that's the amount of that money that is going to them okay the amount of the money that's going to the consumer what we call the consumer's benefit not their surplus is e f G and I. Now we've accounted for all of that money. All of that money is going to the market participant. Of that money, how much went to the producer? We call that the producer's benefit, B, C, D. How much of that money went to the consumer? We call that their benefit, E, F, G, I. We remember that benefit is not surplus. Benefit minus cost equals surplus. So hey, we're talking about two different things. Here we're talking about surplus changes, okay? Surplus changes. But I just wanted to also go over this other thing that you'll sometimes hear, what is the benefit of the subsidy? And that's what that would be. Hope you stayed with me through that video. We'll see you in the next one. Thanks for tuning in.